So today I'll talk about foundations and I will start with a nice idea, very nice, by a student, Kayla Jacobs, who described quantum candies for quantum key distribution. And then I will show some results that are much later uh, that we published in a conference and it is related also to quantum networks as I will show at the last slides of the show. So I'll start with Jacobs Quantum Candies. It is an unpublished work. Kayla Jacobs actually presented it in, um, in various uh, high schools where she wanted to explain quantum cryptography to kids. And uh, then she moved to the Technion and she told us about it. It was never published. She moved to other topics and then I guess she left academia. So I will do uh, the advertisement for her here. Um, so her idea was to explain the BB84 quantum key distribution using quantum candies. I will first explain the difference between classical and quantum candies, then quantum key distribution, then how to introduce entanglement into this uh, method and how it does relate um, to quantum key distribution with the BM Hartner Moore method, which is related, closely related to, to measurement device independent, and finally to networks. So, what are classical candies? The classical candies that we discuss here are a bit special. They are quite similar to MM, but not totally similar. So, they have two tastes chocolate or vanilla, uh, C or V, and two colors, red or green. But unlike m, m each candy is covered, so we cannot see the color. We can choose whether to look or to taste. And then there is a unique candies machine that generates a, only four options. You can only choose a color, for example, red or green, or you can choose a taste, chocolate or vanilla. So you only choose one of these specific properties. So once we have this candy machine and we choose a specific property, of course, if we choose a color, it means that we don't know what the taste is. Now, classically, this would mean that the taste is random because the machine, when we choose red, it doesn't decide on a, on, on a taste, but it doesn't mean that, it, that there is no taste, of course, it is just random. And if you choose a taste, then the color is random. And each generated candies is again uh, covered so we cannot see the color or the taste. Now, when we go to quantum candies, they are a bit similar. We can still have the four properties, chocolate, vanilla, red, or green. And again, if somebody will try the correct a general property. So if we generate chocolate and somebody will taste, of course the taste will be correct. But if we made, if, if the producer decided on a color, let's say red, and somebody tastes it, it will still be random, but it doesn't mean that the taste was there before the decision to taste it. And similarly, um, if you decide to look, of course, you see the color. And similarly, if you produce a taste and you decide to look, it will be random, but it doesn't mean that the color was there because once we choose a quantum taste, there is no color. So if we try to compare the two, we may go back to Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein did not believe in these things. If he has a candy machine and it would produce a red candy, Einstein would say that there is a taste, but due to technical limitations, we cannot know what it is. Einstein said, God doesn't play dice. However, Eve in this respect is more powerful. She got no technical limitations. So what does it mean? If we, if we start with a candy machine that generates the red color and the taste does not exist, 
It means if, even if she has all the technology that could ever be, it wouldn't help her because the test is not there. So unlike Einstein, we believe that a red candy has no taste. And by the way, of course, Bell inequalities show that there is inconsistency between Einstein's view, which is called hidden variables, and quantum theory. So today we believe quantum theory and not hidden variable. Now, the interesting thing here is that we only need the green, uh, red, chocolate, and vanilla. We don't need superpositions. We don't need to know anything about mathematics in order to see these properties of quantum physics. So a red candy has no taste, a chocolate candy has no color. Now we can use this to introduce quantum key distribution. So classically, Ali sends zero or one to Bob. However, uh, well, not yet, however, this is the simplest example for a classical bit sent from Alice to Bob. And quantumly, we are used to the BB84 protocol. So Alice sends to Bob either zero or one or plus or minus, which for us would be the two colors and the two tastes. And without loss of generality, it doesn't matter which one we choose to be which one, as long of, as long as uh, of course, if we choose zero to be red, then one must be green. So Alice uh, wants to send a secret bit classically. If there is an eavesdropper, the eavesdropper can hear, can learn the classical bit. But quantumly, if the eavesdropper needs to eavesdrop, wants to eavesdrop, um, she has a problem. So of course we also need the classical phone here. We all, I, I believe you all know uh, BB84. So the classical phone is insecure, um, but cannot be modified. So whatever is sent from Alice to Bob classically, Bob uh, here correctly. And Alice sends uh, zero, one or plus and minus. And later on, she would tell Bob what uh, basis she chose, whether it is the zero, one or the plus minus. So similarly, when we move to the quantum candies, Alice would send a quantum candy and later on, she will only tell Bob whether she used color or taste. Now, if Bob has a memory, he can get 100% of the information. If he doesn't have a quantum memory, he would need to decide before Alice is telling him whether it is a color or taste. So he would, for example, look and see a red, and if Alice indeed sent a color, then they have a common, a, a common bit, so they lose half of the bits this way. Now, if eavesdropper tries to eavesdrop, the simplest attack that I guess we all know, uh, so for example, if Alice sends red and Bob looks, then he sees red, and if, if, if the eavesdropper uh, tries to look, she will also know that it is red. And we assume that she's looking and she prepares a new candy according to what she has seen. But, so here Eve gets full information and doesn't introduce any noise. But uh, in the same example, Alice sends red and Bob looks. If Eve eats the candy, the taste will be random, either C or V, uh, chocolate or vanilla. Eve gets no information, and now she needs to send something to Bob. She doesn't know that it is a, she's, she chose the wrong property to try. So she would prepare, if, if she tasted chocolate, she would prepare chocolate. And then, um, of course, she introduces an error because Bob might see red or green with equal probability. And what one interesting, uh, um, property, uh, one interesting point about this protocol, if you know mutually unbiased bases, so here there is no limitation. We can have a uh, three color and three taste. We can have another property such as uh, texture. We can have unlimited number of mutually unbiased bases for a qubit. So the model is not exactly a quantum model. It goes 
beyond or it is more general in some sense. Now, what we add, so until now it was the Jacobs model, Jacobs candies, and what we added, this is along with uh, Yunan Lin, a PhD student at IQC, a student of Ramon Laflamme. And what we added is the possibility of correlations. So we are using the regular uh, signs of uh, phi plus, phi minus, psi plus, psi minus. But here, what it means, there are, there are no superpositions. So what it means, for example, phi plus means identical color and identical taste. So we need a new type of machine that instead of generating single candies, it will generate pairs of candies according to, again to one of four uh, buttons that we can press. But now it will be one of these either identi identical colors and identical tastes or opposite colors and opposite tastes, which is uh, of course the singlet state, etc. Now, based on this uh, new type of candies, for example, we can, uh, we, we show it in the paper in the TPNC's uh, theory and practice of natural computing. Uh, the conference uh, finally, of course, did not exist. It is delayed uh, to next year, but at least uh, there is the publication in lecture notes of computer science. And um, for example, what we show in the paper is a bit commitment scheme and how you can cheat it, which already was shown by Bennett and Brassard in, 19, in the same BB84 paper, uh, but here it is using candies. Now, what we go, what we can do beyond the conference paper, and this is now written, written for a journal uh, version. This is along with uh, Roman Shapira, my student uh, at the Technion and with uh, Yunan Lin. So we, we present measuring the same correlations. So suppose a pair of regular candies is prepared and sent to, the, to a measuring device. And now the measuring device can measure whether it is ident identical colors and identical taste, etc. It is a single measurement giving one of the four outcomes. And based on this measurement, already in 1996, so it is uh, 24 years ago, when I was in the first stages of my PhD, we presented along with Eli Biam and Bruno Hatner the BHM protocol for key distribution, but it can fully be explained with candies. And in the, in the BHM protocol, Alice and Bob send random candies to a center, to Charlie. Each candy is random in the BB84 state. So here it is chocolate, vanilla, red, or green. Charlie measures the correlation and tells them the result, e.g. phi minus or one of the other three results. Later on, they compare the general property, color or taste, and if both of them used the same uh, property, let's say both of them used color, given now the correlations, they know each one knows what is the other bit, what is the bit of the other, and they can share a key. And the key is secret also against Charlie. So this is very important. This is the most important feature of the BHM protocol. And now it can be shown with candies. And the BHM protocol later on got a different name and people called it the measurement device independent, MDI QKD. It is exactly the same thing. So, Alice generates a random candy and Bob generates also a random candy, but now instead of sending the candies to, to Charlie, uh, Alice keeps her candy and Bob's candy is also sent to Alice. Alice measures, so Alice now plays also the role of Charlie. She measures and she tells Bob the correlation result. And this is called MDI, measurement device independent, because even if Alice's device is fully controlled by the eavesdropper, the eavesdropper cannot learn anything about the shared key. So it is just another variant of the BHM protocol, um, which became very famous, the, the MDI QKD. Today, there is uh, 
there are many papers about it. And also there are, of course, a device independent, but this is a different. So finally, we can design the BHM Candies network, which is the goal of this conference, of course, to talk about networks. So now, instead of, I'll go back two slides, instead of having one center, we can have a network of centers and each two centers can uh, share entangled cor or correlated, here these are just correlations, but can this correlation. So each uh, two centers could share a correlated pairs or alternatively, there could be super centers and each two centers can connect via a super center. So with human network, centers are highly capable and can teleport candies and they can do entanglement swapping. All this can be described via candies uh, and they can use super centers so we don't need uh, too many uh, connect connection lines between each two pairs, but only to the super centers. And then if Alice lives near center one and she has her candies there, by the way, our motivation in the BHM was that instead of sending the candies, you can go and program there the, the candies when you just go to the center. So there is another difference between this and a regular network that you can just go and program the candies by, by physically going to the center and do everything there. And uh, upon a request of, of any two parties, let's say Bob and Alice, they just ask this, the center, let's say center two can teleport the candies of Bob to center one and the rest is as before. And, um, but, but here there is one difference from what I showed till now that to present teleportation, we do need to define more things that were not yet defined. And, here, uh, we basically kind of go back to superposition. So we lose some of the generality that I mentioned before that candies can be in some sense more general than qubits. Uh, I think also my time is uh, nearly finished. So, but, but however, we need to know or to recall if you already know that teleporting only these four specific states is different from teleporting an unknown state, an arbitrary state, because for example, if you apply uh, the gate Z to zero or the, or the gate I to zero, you still get zero up to a phase. Here it is not up to a phase, but if you apply them to one, it will be up to a phase. So in some respect, it is simpler than the arbitrary teleportation. If you only know, if you only try to teleport zero or one, it is enough to send one bit later on. And similarly, if you try to teleport plus and minus, and it is not true for other states, for any other state, you need to send two bits for, for, full te for teleportation. Um, so I'm basically almost done here. Um, we are, so this feature is, makes the candies different from send using arbitrary states, but it is still identical to using BB84 states. And finally, we can show a network, as we said, um, except that for the teleportation, it is a bit, uh, we, we need to get out from the candy picture and use superpositions, but there are also other ideas of how not to introduce superposition and still have a candy network. So finally, the candy teleportation is kind of equal to, to quantum teleportation and the candy network is kind of equal to the quantum BHM network. And I think that's all I have to say here.